close to that. Quiet. But just close it. It don't matter. I'm still gonna hear him either way. Sorry about that. That was my dog saying hello. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Don I, and you, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments, committed us, and grossed ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Don I, and you, soon the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Don I, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed you, Adonai, Eleni, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations, and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence who none you may be kind to. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. As you can see, today's read is Shimini, or the Eighth. Come on, there you go. Uh, today's read is going to be Le Leviticus 9, 1 through eleven forty seven. <clears throat> On the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, Take for yourself a bull, calf, for a sin offering, and a ram, for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and offer them before Yahweh. And say to the people of Israel, Take a male goat for a sin offering, and a calf, and a lamb, both a year old without blemish, for a burnt offering. And an ox and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before Yahweh, and a grain offering mixed with oil for today Yahweh will appear to you. And they brought what Moses commanded in front of the tent of meeting, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahweh. And Moses said, This is the thing that Yahweh commanded you to do, that the glory of Yahweh may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar, and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and your and make atonement for yourself and for the people, and bring the offering of the people, and make atonement for them, as Yahweh commanded. So Aaron drew near to the altar, and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron presented the blood to him, and he, dis and he dipped his finger in the blood, and put it on the horns of the altar, and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. And the fat and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering he burned up on the altar as Yahweh commanded Moses. The flesh and the skin he burned up with fire outside the camp. Come on. Today is just not a good day. Then he killed the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons handed him the blood, and he drew and he threw it against the sides of the altar, and they handed the burnt offerings to him, burnt offering to him, piece by piece. And the head he burned them on the altar, and he washed the entrails and legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's offering and took the goat of the sin offering that was for the people, and killed it, and offered it as a sin offering, like the first one. And he presented the burnt offering, and the offering, and offered it according to the rule. And he presented the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar beside the burnt offering. Besides the burnt offering of the morning, then he killed the ox and the ram, the sacrifice of the peace offerings for the people. And Aaron's sons handed him the blood. And he threw it against the sides of the altar, but the fat pieces in the ox and the ram, the fat tail that which, and that which covers the entrails and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver, they put the fat pieces on the breasts, and he burned the fat pieces on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh Aaron waved for a wave offering before Yahweh as Moses commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hand toward hands towards the people and blessed them, and he came down from Offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings and Moses and Aaron went into the tent of the meeting And when they came out they blessed the people and the glory of Yahweh appeared to the people and fire came out from before Yahweh and, and consumed the burnt offerings and the pieces of fat on the altar and when all the people saw it they shouted and fell on their faces
Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. And the fire came out from before Yahweh and consumed them, and they died before Yahweh. And Moses said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh has said. Among those who are near me, I will be sanctified, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and El Zaphon, the sons of Azui, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, carry your brothers away from the front of the sanctuary and out of the camp. So they came near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron and Eliezer and Ithamar, his sons, Do not let the hair of your heads hang loose, and do not tear your clothes, lest you die. And wrath come upon all the congregation. But let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burnt, the burning that Yahweh has kindled. And do not go outside the entrance of the tent of meeting, lest you die. For the anointing oil of Yahweh is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And Yahweh spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine or strong drink. You or your sons with you. When you go into the tent of meeting, lest you die, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. You are to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean. And you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that Yahweh had spoken to them by Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and Eliezer and Ithamar, his surviving sons. Take the grain offering that is left of Yahweh's food offerings and eat it. Unleavened beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your due and your son's due, from Yahweh's food offering. For so I am commanded. But the breast that is waved and the thigh that is contributed, you shall eat it in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you. For they are given as your due and your sons do, from the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the people of Israel. The thigh that is contributed and the breast which is waved they shall bring with the food offerings of the fat pieces to wave for a wave offering before Yahweh and it shall be yours and your sons with you as they do forever as Yahweh has commanded now Moses diligently required of the goat of the sin offering and behold it was burned up and he was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar the surviving sons of Aaron saying why have you not eaten the sin offering in the place of the sanctuary since it is a thing most holy and it has been given to you that you may bear the iniquity of the congregation to make atonement for them before Yahweh behold his blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary you certainly ought to have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded and Aaron and his sons behold Today they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh, yet such things as these have happened to me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would Yahweh have approved? And when Moses heard it, heard that he approved. And Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron saying to them speak to the people of Israel saying these are the living things that you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth whatever parts whatever parts the hoof and his cloven foot and chews the cud among animals you may eat nevertheless among those that chew the cud or part of the part the hoof you shall not eat these the camel because it chews the cud but does not part the hoof it is unclean to you and the rock badger, because it chews the cud, but does not part the hoof, it is unclean to you. And the hare, because it chews the cud, but does not part the hoof, it is unclean to you. And the pig, because it parts the hoof, and is cloven-footed, but does not chew the cud, it is, un is unclean to you. You shall not eat any of their flesh, and you shall not touch their car carcasses. They are unclean to you. These you may eat. Of all that are in the waters, everything in the water that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, you may eat, but anything in the seas or in the rivers that does not have fins and scales, of the swarming creatures in the water and the living creatures that are in the water is detestable to you. 
You shall regard them as detestable, and you shall not eat any of their flesh, and you shall detest their carcasses. Everything in the water that does not have fins and scales is detestable to you. And these you shall detest among the birds you shall not eat. You shall not, they shall not be eaten. They are detestable, the eagle, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the falcon of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, the hawk of any kind, the little owl, the cormorant, the short-eared owl, the barn owl, the tarny owl, and the carrion vulture, the stork, the, her the heron of any kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. All winged insects that go on all fours are detestable for you. Yet among the winged insects that go on all fours, you may eat those that have jointed legs above their feet with which to hop on the ground. Of them you may eat the locusts of any kind, the bald locusts of any kind, the cricket of any kind, the grasshopper of any kind. But all other winged insects that have four feet are detestable to you. And by these you shall become unclean. Whoever touches the car their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. Whoever carries any part, <coughs> excuse me, any part of their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Every animal that parts the hoof but is not cloven-footed or does not chew to cut is unclean to you. Everyone who touches them shall be unclean, and all that walk on their paws among the animals that go on all fours are unclean to you. Whoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he who carries the carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. They are unclean to you. And these are unclean to you among the swarming things that swarm on the ground, the mole rat, the mouse, the great lizard of any kind, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the lizard, the sand lizard, and the chameleon. These are unclean to you among all that swarm. Whoever touches them when they are dead shall be unclean until the evening. And anything on which any of them falls when they are dead shall be unclean, whether it is an article of wood or a garment or skin or sack. Any article that is used for any purpose, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until evening. Then it shall be clean. And if any of them falls into any earthenware vessel, all that is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break it. Any food that is that could be eaten on which water comes shall be unclean. And all drink that could be drunk from every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything which is any part of the carcass falls shall be unclean, whether oven or stove it shall be broken into pieces. They are unclean and shall remain unclean for you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern water hole shall be clean, but whoever touches a carcass in them shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass falls upon any seed grain that is to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on a seed or any part of their carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. And if any animal which you may eat dies, whoever touches its carcass shall be unclean until evening, and whoever eats of its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Whoever carries a carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Every swarming thing that swarms on the ground is detestable. It shall not be eaten. Whoever goes on its belly, whatever goes on all fours, and whatever has many feet, any swarming thing that swarms on the ground you shall not eat, for they are detestable. You shall not make yourselves detestable with any swarming thing that swarms. And you shall not defile yourself with them and become unclean through them. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourself with any swarming thing that crawls on the ground. For I am Yahweh, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law about beasts and birds and every living creature that moves through the water and every creature that swarms on the ground to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean, and between the living creature that may be eaten and the living creature that may not. Help if I had it right side up. Yep. Blessed art thou, Donah, King of the Universe. Who gave us the Torah and set everlasting life 
in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver the Torah, Bruka Tadoni, and Lehini Malak Halo, Mashan, and the Tadal and Utra, and Amet Vaishil, and the Tabetikinu, Bruka Tadoni, and Tin Ha Torah. Sorry about the introduction. Uh, buddy was barking, so Nick had to close the, uh, yeah. Well, I'll see you. I hope you all have a great night and a fantastic tomorrow.